Hi, I'm Matt Hill. I'm the curriculum designer here at MRU. Day two of our revamped unit plan on supply and demand. All right, so you want to start this day. Well, this day will all be all about shifting the demand curve. And to introduce that, who better to introduce it than uh, Messi and Taylor Swift? So we have some questions about what happens when Messi comes to town, what happens when Taylor Swift comes to town, and students could predictably guess um, prices go up for things in and around these events. Some nice graphics from the uh, some articles profiling what happens when Taylor Swift comes to town, what happens when Messi um, comes to town. And then we have some retrieval practice here uh, for the students. What is the law of demand? They should have learned this yesterday. And so hopefully they remember that when the price goes up, the quantity goes down and vice versa. But is there a paradox then? Because it seems like when Taylor Swift comes to town, the price of hotels go, goes up and also the quantity goes up, the occupancy goes up. So does this violate the law of demand? The answer is no, because the curve itself has changed. Something, the fundamentals have changed describing that relationship between price and quantity. Something different has happened. Taylor Swift is in town. So now the demand curve for hotels has totally changed because there's a new element, Taylor Swift. So the curve has shifted. The demand curve just describes the relationship between price and quantity, all else being equal, assuming like nothing changes. All right, so the video goes over um, a shift in the demand curve and getting students to think about a shift in the demand curve in both the horizontal sense and the vertical sense. So the horizontal sense, meaning when a curve shifts out at any given price, the quantity demanded will be higher. You guys will think about it in the vertical sense that the marginal buyer is willing to pay more after the demand shift. All right. So, what make you what may, what might make you buy more at a given price? Students will have many answers. Mostly, will, will be related to taste. But these are the things that could shift the demand curve. Taste. So, something about our taste for this good has uh, has changed related to I don't know advertising or a, a scientific study comes out. Related goods. If there's you know if the, if the if some good that goes with if you know peanut butter gets super expensive, my demand for jelly will drop. Income will also affect people's willingness to pay for goods. Number of buyers in a market will affect at any given price. You know, what is the quantity sold? And then expectations about future prices. If I think something's going to go on sale, my demand for that good will be lower in the present. So these are things that can shift the demand curve. The video goes over them uh, in depth. Here we have a, a table that the students fill out in their student activity sheet. Um, and these are all sort of real life events that move demand curves. And the students have to think about, all right, which way is the demand curve going to shift? Is it going to shift out? Is it going to shift back? And then which of these determinants, taste, related goods, income, buyers, expectation, which of them is driving that change? And then just, you know, so you have it, here are all the um, answers written up. Okay. So, you know, I sort of breezed through that in class. Obviously, that would take way longer. We're going to spend the last part of class going through, okay, because people always get confused about this. They think a curve shifts when sometimes we're moving along the curve. So if, if you have a price change in the good itself, you're just moving along the curve. So if the price of jelly goes up, the quantity demanded goes down for jelly. Jelly, the curve itself doesn't shift, but students always get confused. Oh, the price of jelly has gone up. Uh, people are going to buy less, so the, the curve has shifted back. No, no, no. This is what the demand curve is describing. The relationship between price and quantity is these other factors that determine that demand curve. When they change, the curve shifts. And in econ, we have all of these annoying vocabulary quirks. One of them is that we call this shift in demand a change in demand. We call this movement along the curve a change in the quantity demanded. So that's what we're sort of going through here and in this slide. Then we have even a whole video about it because we know students get super confused. So we have a whole video going through it where they have to, you know, make this distinction, change in demand or change in the quantity demand. And then there's the answers and then, you know, more tests on that. Okay. You know, trying to figure out, all right, what's going to lead to a change in demand similar to that. Again, this is more uh, testing what's going to move it, <laughs> move it to demand curve, excuse me. More questions related to the video, again, pausing um, throughout, and we have the answers there for you. And then lastly, we have a interactive practice. These are always 
super super popular and again what this one is going to do is they're going to practice all right does the you know, are we moving along the curve or is the curve itself shifting okay this is actually going to increase the demand there we go All right, and so it's just them practicing. All right, is do we have a change in demand or a change in the quantity of demand? And we actually have three sets of those uh, those interactives. We just put the first one here, but if you want to use more, there's more there because students will need a lot of practice with that. All right, lastly, we have our exit, exit ticket, just seeing how much students understand this. Okay. All right. So that's day two. We've covered the shift in the demand curve and the difference between the change in the quantity demanded and a change in demand. Get our supply, demand, and equilibrium unit plan here, or click for the next video.